and welcome to this lesson on understanding and incorporating strategies that eliminate distractions. When you have ADHD, these external distractions are excruciating because one of the major characteristics that happen in the brain of someone with ADHD is poor sustained attention or persistence of effort to tasks. People with ADHD struggle with the inability to turn off both external stimuli, like the activity outside the window, and internal stimuli, like thinking about a play date that is planned uh, for the later in the day. Struggling to pay attention often happens when you're assigned boring, tedious, lengthy, or repetitive and unappealing activities. Your child with ADHD might not be able to have that same level of motivation and willpower as others their own age when uninteresting yet important tasks must be performed. You and your child may be easily bored with these tasks and consequently shift from one uncompleted activity to another. Your child may also have problems with completing routine assignments without direct supervision because they're unable to stay on task during independent work. The major symptoms of ADHD are likely to change significantly depending on which situation you or your child happen to be in. Those with ADHD behave better in one-on-one -on -one situations when doing tasks that they enjoy or find interesting, when there is immediate payoff for behaving well, which is why rewards help when they're supervised. So when you're standing over their shoulder, that really helps. If their work is done earlier in the day rather than later, and for children, when their fathers are there compared to their mothers. On the other hand, those with ADHD may show more of their symptoms in group settings, like in the classroom, when they must perform boring work, when they must work independently, when they must work or get their work done and later, and when they're working with their mothers. In some cases, these situational factors may have little effect on ADHD symptoms, but they have been noted enough in research that it's important to keep this in mind when you think about yourself and your child. People with ADHD produce less dopamine in reward centers of the brain that impact motivation and attention and in other large brain networks that allow for the top-down control of emotions and impulsive responding. By increasing rewards, making tasks interesting and stimulating and adding variety, educators can help children with ADHD to focus and learn the material. Medication helps, but there are also tools, strategies, and classroom accommodations that you, your child, and teachers can use to reduce distractions. First, let's start with some strategies and accommodations that you and your child can put into place for remote learning. And these suggestions can be used if you're working from home. A list of in-classroom accommodations and strategies is provided in the links below for when everybody gets back to in-person learning. First, if possible, have your child's remote learning station in a common area like a dining room rather than in their bedroom so that you can keep an eye out as much as possible. If she doesn't need her computer, don't have it open and keep her phone in another room. If he does need his computer, instead of saying, you better not open any more tabs, or if I see you on YouTube one more time, you're in big trouble, say, do you know what might help you to stay focused on this activity? And see what he says. In general, as much as possible, put a little bit of ownership on your child. He might be more likely to get the job done. If all else fails, use apps and programs to block out online distractions. I will be talking about that a little bit later on. 
So now let's talk about how other family members are at home and maybe creating distractions. Um, and they're not respecting the need for quiet. What you can do is tell your family that your child needs some quiet time when remote learning is in session. And if they have been uncooperative with this request, ask them for ideas on how they can help your child get it. Perhaps your spouse can run errands, take smaller children outside, or they can play games. Think of practical things that can work for everyone. Another idea is to provide rewards to family members who do keep it down during designated school times. So let's get real. Often having a completely quiet house can be a huge challenge, even if all of your family members are being cooperative. There are household and outside noises that can create a distraction, like we described earlier, construction going outside or your barking dog. When you or your child are working independently, maybe you can use white noise or a sound machine to block those sounds out. The next option is to use earplugs or noise canceling headphones and listening to background music like classical music that doesn't have any lyrics and that might be helpful. Also, there is very limited research from very small and short research studies with mixed results that suggest that listening to high binaural beats helps to reduce inattention compared to audio without binaural beats. I'm going to link to more information about this below. Again, while it isn't harmful, further research is needed, but some people have reported that it can be helpful to listen to it while focusing on tasks that require attention. So now let's talk about how a teacher can help with some strategies. If your child's teacher is not doing these already, ask them to do the following. Break long assignments into smaller parts. This allows your child to see both the start and end of each task. Provide written instructions in addition to giving them out loud. Provide breaks that include stretching or taking walks by making sure your child has the opportunity for physical activity, it increases their ability to focus. Recess or breaks should never be taken away as punishment for misbehavior. Next, limit repetitive assignments, especially if your child has already mastered the material. Your child is most able to pay attention to tasks that present some challenges, but are within their current learning zone. Next, work in cooperation with your teacher to reward your child for class participation. This will ensure that by you knowing about their participation, that rewards are given quickly to reinforce that positive behavior. And finally, use breakout rooms so that students can interact and collaborate on projects. Remember that we talked about working in teams helps with focus. So now let's talk about some tools that may help. As mentioned earlier, white noise machines can help some people to focus on their work. Here are some options. One is the Ambient Mixer. It's a free online source of white noise from many natural locations and several fictional spots. The next tool will help you generate your own customized white noise. I will provide the link below. You can also search on Amazon and they have many small and portable machines that can provide just basic white noise to more sophisticated models with more features and sounds. As an added benefit, as we talked about earlier, these can also help with sleeping. For some reason nowadays, finding a loud fan can sometimes be a challenge, but if you have one or find one, that can work too, of course. And finally, you can find white noise on YouTube, but if your goal is to focus, you may wanna stay off of YouTube. The next tool is the motivator. You and your child can clip the motivator to your waistband or carry it in your pocket and let its unique ultra quiet high wobble vibration 
signal, keep your attention focused on what you want to accomplish. The next tool is to use a privacy board. It's simply a three panel privacy board that helps to block out visual distractions. You can find them on Amazon and education stores. The next tool is a Chrome extension called Stay Focused. It helps you to stay focused on work by restricting the amount of time you can spend on time-wasting websites. Once your, you or your child's allotted time has been used up, the sites you have blocked will be inaccessible for the rest of the day. Another extension is the distraction-free mode for Google Docs and Google Slides. You or your child will benefit if you use this extension when you're doing writing or taking notes. It hides all controls and buttons and helps you and your child focus on the creation rather than the formatting. So you're not playing with the bolds, underlines, italicizing, and all the other features. After the notes or writing are done, you can then focus on the formatting. As an added benefit, if you or your child prefer to speak out your writing, you can use voice typing while you're in distraction-free mode. The final tool is to use device contracts. Banning digital devices is almost impossible, but by providing your child with rules and writing so that they are understood and rewards for following them, it's a win-win-win for teachers, parents, and kids. So I'm gonna close with the benefits to remote learning and helping with focus. You may or may not be surprised to learn that some children with ADHD are actually doing better academically while learning from home, or at least some things are going well. So what are the good things about remote learning? If we understand what's working and why and for whom, we can ask teachers to incorporate these strategies into in-person classroom accommodations for those children who will benefit. Also, these things that are working can be used if your child is homeschooled regularly or during homework time. So here are some reasons why children with ADHD are doing better while remote learning. The first one is that schooling for many kids is a combination of direct instruction and a tutorial model. So students access the direct instruction and then they have the option of attending online office hours or chat sessions for more help. Now children who understand the material don't have to do the repetitive work that makes it difficult to avoid distractions. The next thing is that Assignments, due dates, and procedures are delivered to students by the teacher. So kids aren't required to have to try and focus on recording the assignments in their agenda books while listening to the teacher. Another thing is that students are working in relative isolation. So of course, in a lot of cases, there are fewer distractions. The next thing is that most students are spending less time in direct instruction. They now have more flexibility to schedule their work as it suits them. In one case, a student said that she can take a two hour midday break that includes eating lunch and getting outdoors. She can get a lot of her work done when she still has some daytime energy and can be more efficient. And finally, books, notebooks, papers, materials, or any other planning tools are all in one location. So there are no demands on focusing on what to bring to school or to take home. So once we're all back to in-person learning, how do you think you can incorporate some of these benefits? Comment below to share your thoughts and ideas with others. Thank you for joining me for this lesson.